Hello everybody, welcome back to Quality Time. And, uh, hey, first big piece of news, economics are thankfully back in balance. At last, we only had to go through about three months of tribulation, thanks to the very deservedly maligned universal credit system. Yeah, it's only gonna get worse, unfortunately. There is no part of the economics of this unfortunate country that's going to get better in the very near future. Short of violent uprising, which I am continually kind of. I don't want to advocate for that, but we're running out of alternatives. Uh, but, on to mildly less downer kind of subjects. The heat seems to be back. It's not quite at its peak of the uh, the heat wave that we had, but we're sticking into the 20s again. And I believe I mentioned when I first discussed the heat wave that 20 degrees is not good for the UK. Um, it's, like, generally speaking, we're built for maybe the high teens. We're not built for 20s. We're especially not built for the high 20s nearing 30s. Uh, but 20s, we are at least better capable of surviving. We're still kind of melting, but at least this time we actually have fans already in the building, so hey, we'll survive. Don't know about the rest of us, but we'll survive. And onto significantly more exciting and positive news, I have a new phone. I am now entering this decade of phone technology just in time to see it end. So before and since about 2007 or so, I have been using a this which is the LG KP501, colourfully named The Cookie, and it has lasted, to its credit, very well. There's a little bit of ablation on one of the buttons, uh, the, power the power cover has gone, um, but barring that, the only problem this has that it is that it is incredibly senile. Before this phone, I did not know that electronics could go senile, um, but this one has, so yeah. This like, the major problem of this is mostly the pay-as-you-go system that I use it for, and the fact that its camera quality is garbage, but what would you expect from 2007? That said, it did nonetheless have some advantages over the new iteration of my phone technology, and the A for one, it's actually, like, pocket-sized. I don't know what happens to phones, but they're not pocket-sized anymore. The closest I could find to the KP501 when I was out shopping literally had hearing aid compatibility as, like, a highlighted feature. Yeah, I think I'm a bit overdue. But, here is the new one. This is the Samsung A40. This is not top of the line. This is not, like, the most, like, fresh and new thing in the world. But, you know, it's close enough. It's, it's significantly closer than the KP501. And... It's got a high-quality camera, it does half-decent video, it has apps, it has all of the everyday stuff that everyone but me has taken for granted for about six plus years. So yay for that. And this is also my new contract, so I no longer have to worry about running out of credit every single time I have to phone the government. <laughs> Still not a fan of contracts, I have to say, but... If I'm gonna have to keep doing that, then I might as well make sure that I actually have the capacity to do that. So... Yeah. Thanks for that, HMRC, you have driven me to signing a deal with the devil. Speaking, by the way, of like technology decades and whatnot ending, uh, my tablet also seems to be on the way out. It's, it, it's functioning fine, except that it's an extremely densely packed object, and one of the uh, components in that dense packing is the battery, which will lift me my eye on, and is about uh, four years old, so it's expanding and cracking the rest of the machine open. Now, I'm pretty sure we can replace that battery. I'm pretty sure it is actually a fairly easy fix. Others think that I'm currently harboring a fire hazard in my office and should immediately chuck it out into the street. So... You know, those differing opinions. But in addition to the phone, and possibly the tablet, uh, the economics being back in swing has actually allowed me to upgrade some more of my technology, so more on that next week. Other than that though, onto the schedule. On a Thursday night at 9pm BSD, we are freshly out of Pluto in Warframe, so now it's time to explore Sydney. Then on Friday at 9, we have some more Dead by Daylight, where we're rolling some random perks all night. And on Saturday at 7, we have more Dungeons and Dragon Hats, where the trio have made their way back to the estate of Lady Valerie. But what awaits them there? 
followed, of course, at 9 with the carousel and some random games and discussion of what just the heck happened. And we close out the week on Tuesday at 9 with some building blocks, continuing our foray into modding Minecraft. And videos you might have missed for the week, we have just the basics where we are erecting the alien world's first rail line, and we have two various oddities codex entries, where conveyors and scarecrows are explained in detail. And as ever, onto the questions. So as always, drop these in the comment section down below if you have anything you want to hear me answer. Our one question of the week comes from Princess Firefly. Where in the United States would you like to visit? This is a tough question. Um, firstly, my knowledge of geography is hecking awful. Uh, almost notoriously so. I failed geography several times in my life, and uh, I should not be relied upon to navigate any form of map whatsoever. But, uh, additionally to that, my knowledge of the US is scant and pretty heavily weighted towards the awful things that it has as a nation done and is continuing to do. Um, so I don't actually know all that many places in the US. I probably could not even begin to name all of the states that are part of it, but in fairness you have like 50 plus of them. Um, Mount Rushmore looks neat. It would be fun to check out Yellowstone, provided it wasn't actively exploding at the time, but I suppose if it was then there wouldn't necessarily be a better place to be. Hmm. Hawaii seems like a nice place to check out as well, although I wouldn't necessarily want to be another white guy visiting Hawaii. It seems like they've caused enough troubles. But then again, there's not going to be many places on the continent of the Americas where a white guy hasn't caused troubles, so... Might as well, I guess. Um, yeah, there's, there, I'm aware that there is like a bunch of different interesting places, like geological natural features, lots of very significant historic places. Uh, Cape Canaveral might be fun to visit, but by and large, I'm actually mostly no. I, I'm actually mostly knowledgeable of England. Um, so, yeah, apologies there, but uh, let's let's start with like Yellowstone National Park and go from there. And with that incredibly underwhelming display of your geographical knowledge, I hope you've all enjoyed, and I'll catch you all next time.